Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wine and Diamond Mastro. I'm your host, Tom Mastriani. Today, we're gonna to be making a really cool dish. This is a cabbage dish, and we're gonna call it Keen Cab Cabbage. Keen Cab Cabbage. The main star of this is, uh, well, cabbage, of course. And we have our cabbage, and this is a beautiful cabbage. And then we have quinoa. So some people will use rice. I'm gonna use quinoa. And then the extra special ingredient are cabernet grapes, okay? These are actually cabernet grapes that are grown for wine. But what they did, they took them and used them as raisins. So you notice they're very, very small, and they're, very tasty, not too sweet. Some people like to use raisins. I'm gonna use these Cabernet grapes because they're definitely um, uh, tastier, very flavorful. Plus, they're not too sweet, so it's gonna be great. So we're gonna start by putting the cabbage in the water, but we're gonna cut it first. You wanna get something fairly big. You wanna dig down fairly deep so that the leaves are no longer attached. So you want to basically core the cabbage. I'm going to make sure that it's able to peel apart, which it is. So now we're going to take this and gently put it in the pot of water. Now we have some water boiling here. There's some salt in the water. I'm just going to cover that over. Now, yes, it's floating, but we're going to flip it in a little bit so that both sides get evenly heated and cooked. The meat, we have pork and we have beef. So we're gonna combine the two, mix them together with um, some cheese and the quinoa, of course. We're gonna cook the quinoa halfway. So we're not gonna cook it all the way, so it's gonna be a little, have a little more texture beyond al dente. It's gonna be actually undercooked. A um, little pepper, so that it uh, gives it a little bit of spice to it. And then some Pecorino Romano. So we have provolone, we have Pecorino Romano, tomato paste, parsley, onions, and garlic, of course. So let's try our first wine. And the one we're going with is a River Road. And let's go over to the rack and check it out. This is Californian, Russian River Valley. It's River Road, it's Chardonnay, and it's 2017. And this particular wine will pair very nicely with this, where the cabbage has a very mild flavor to it. We're gonna add the, the meats to it, but it's not gonna be a very strong flavor. The quinoa is very light also. Uh, we're gonna get a sweetness here. I think they're all gonna complement very nicely uh, with this type of wine, Chardonnay. So let's open it up and, and see how it is on its own. Very light, super light, straw colored, Looking good. Ooh, vanilla right off the top. Wow. That's nice. Vanilla, pear, apple. Alcohol level, I'd say somewhere around 13.5. Let's see what shows up in the glass. Uh, again, with the whites, it's a little hard to tell by the glass. But again, the hang time is, is good around the edges. Yeah, and here come the legs. Okay, so that, that's showing off the higher alcohol level. You always want to aerate your wine. Wine's been in the bottle for years, so the air hasn't been in it. You know when you were little, you used to take a teaspoon of uh, some sort of medicine, and mom always said, you know, hold your nose, you won't taste it. Well, you know what? Because you're cutting off the air, and it stops your senses from picking up that smell. So by adding air to it, whenever you see somebody slurp their food or slurp anything, you're, you're mixing it with more air, and this hasn't seen air in a long time, so when you're airing out the wine, you're adding air to it when you do this. Not only are you filling the, the cavity of the glass with wine and with the, the aromas, 
but you're also airing out the wine so that you can smell it better and it, it opens it up a little bit. Very well balanced, creamy, light. That's, that's a very nice wine. I think that's gonna go great with anything we have here. Actually, let's, uh, let's just cut off a little piece of cheese just to see how it goes. Cheese is always good with white wines. Pecorino Romano. Very, very pungent, very tight, salty. What's happening here, they're mixing together, is cutting through the saltiness, kind of washing it away, but leaving behind the, the crystalline of the cheese. Cheese is definitely overpowering the wine, but the wine's awesome. got this cooking right now. Let's um, put the uh, meat in the frying pan. We'll cook that up. We're going to add a little oil to that first. And we're going to have to cut up some onion and chop up a lot of that um, parsley. We have some Italian parsley here. So we've got a little mix of uh, curly parsley and flat parsley. So I'm going to chop up a a good amount, probably about a half a cup. So we're gonna go with about a cup of onion. So we're gonna cut this one in half. And we're gonna cut the good half so that we don't have to. Uh... All right, so we've got our onions. Now we've, this, notice the color, it's gotten a bright green. So we're just gonna flip this over. Notice the, the uh, leaves are starting to fall off already. We're gonna take this leaf off here. Actually now, take this off. Now, as you pull them off, you're gonna find that some are cooked more than others and just let it go. We're gonna use this whole head because at the bottom, we're gonna put it all in a pot and we're gonna let it cook. We're gonna chop up the bottom, layer the bottom, and then we're gonna put roll each one of these and put them on top. And we're just gonna trim these down. We're gonna take the spine off of all of these, then, and we're gonna cook the meat. All right, we're all set up here, everything's all mise en place style so that we have everything is cut up and assembled in the right quantity so we can just put it all together and put it in the pot. So now we're gonna go over to the next wine. So let's go and get our second contestant. This is uh, Kendall Jackson, known as KJ, uh, Avant. Now this is new also and I think Avant like avant-garde means, you know, the newest state-of-the-art avant-garde. So avant is a, a new wine that they've come up with, and it's made in a new world fashion. When, they, when you say old world, you think old world like Europe, you know, and old grapes, old vines, you know, 10, 20, 100 years old. You know, really old vines. They have vines up to 100 years old or maybe even older newer vines, newer grapes. And the thing with California also, with the fires uh, that they've had out there, the fires have destroyed a lot of the vineyards. Now, vineyards in general are natural fire blocks. So when you got a fire coming at them, and the way the rows are set up, and they're very small plants with very small leaves, so there's not much to burn. But what happens is the fire surrounds the vineyards, and it, it completely burns the heat. They have you know, a thousand feet away from the fire, you've got the heat and it's enough to melt all the pipes, all the plastic, it just liquefies the plastic. It's so hot and it destroys the vineyards. So they've had vines out there, you know, 15 year old, 20 year old vines that got completely burned and scorched by, by the fire. So, you know, new vines, you know, they're, they're starting off new. The other thing is these grapes, these wine grapes actually came about because of those fires. 
they had so many acres of what they call smoked grapes. So, you know, when you have, uh, say you burn a sauce, you're cooking your sauce, you're not paying attention, phone rings, somebody bothers you, whatever, and you don't pay attention, you, you know, you always say, keep stirring the sauce, keep stirring the sauce so it doesn't burn. But if you forget and you get a little bit of burnt on the bottom and you keep stirring, you're gonna, that burnt flavor is gonna penetrate the entire pot of sauce and ruin the entire sauce. So this is kind of like what happened. The smoke got into the grapes and now the grapes have, are all smoky. They're smoky grapes, they're unusable. So what these guys got together, they got the, the grapes, they harvested them all, put the workers who weren't able to work and got these grapes off the vines, cleaned them, uh, dried them and turned them into wine grapes. So we're gonna use that for this dish today. So let's open up this wine and see just how it's going. That's a pretty color. Really nice. Kind of like a bright yellow. A little more than straw. Mm. Buttery, creamy, crisp, light. A little bit of lemon, a little bit of grapefruit. Mm. Peach and pear. That's really nice. Mm. Look at that color. Looks slightly effervescent there. We've got tiny, tiny bubbles in there. Mmm. All right. Tangy. Little stone fruit in there. And if anybody says stone fruit, you're like, what does that really mean? Well, stone fruit is when you have a pit, like a peach or, you know, say a peach, for example, you have the outer shell. And then inside the shell, you actually have the pit. So, so the stone they call that the stone, um, which is on the outside, and then you have the pit on the inside. So that's when they say a stone fruit, anything with that kind of a pit inside of it. Usually it's a, a tangy kind of pear, peach, um, not necessarily a pear, but um, those kind of flavors. So, so this has a, a nice flavor, nice creaminess. It's very good. All right, let's, we have our parsley cut up, garlic, onions. Let's get it into the pot and start cooking it. So we have our oil, it's hot. And then I'll get the garlic. Get a little salt on here. We're just gonna sweat this down, get a little bit cooked. And we're gonna add in our meat, we're gonna add in our pork and our beef. On top. We're gonna break this up, stir it around for a while. Now having the diversity of the pork and the beef, really adds a, a, another dimension to this whole dish. So you can even eat, add in a little lamb. We're gonna put a little pepper in here also, and a little hot pepper. Hot pepper. And we're gonna need the big pepper. I haven't used the big pepper today, so let's go get the big pepper. All right, here it is, the big pepper. Big, fresh pepper. It's good stuff. I know what you're thinking right now. Where did you get that giant pepper shaker? Well, go to my website, www.mastrotv.com. Maybe you'll find out. All right, this is gonna take a little while. All right, while this is cooking, we're gonna go over to our next wine. Let's check it out. Oh, it's that one. Bastide Miraflores. Right. This is a French wine. It's a blend of Syrah and Grenache. Okay. And again, don't get hung up on the, the pronunciation. You can always ask the, your wine purveyor or your wine expert at your local wine distributor or wine shop 
and find out, you know, how to say it. Now, uncharacteristic of what we're doing, but we do have meat in here, which calls for a red. And then we have the cabbage and the quinoa, which will call for a white. Big dark cherries, like black cherry. Mmm, really nice. And, and look at the color. That's a really dark garnet color. That's really nice. Look at that. Oh. Oh, yeah. Big black dark cherries. It's just bursting with cherry flavor. And, um, but not sweet, not sweet. It's very dry, very light. A little hint of um, earthiness and a little bit of um, a touch of vanilla. Finishes clean, smooth, very well balanced. That's a really nice wine. Very, very nice. Right, let's get back to this pork. Now we want to break this up really small because we're going to need to get it inside of this cabbage. All right, so we got this meat pretty well cooked. I'll make sure the pork's not too undercooked. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our quinoa, okay? And we're gonna put the quinoa in. Okay, we'll put it in raw, because we want it, it's gonna be cooked a lot. And we're gonna take our raisin grapes. Okay. Parsley. We're going to take our tomato paste. And we're going to deglaze. Take a little white wine. All right, so we're going to let this cook down. We're going to cover this. We're going to clean up. And we'll come back and we'll start rolling this into the cabbage leaves. All right, so we'll see you in a minute. Hi, I'm Tom Mastriani from Wine and Dime with Mastro, where food and magic meet. Join me as I demystify the secrets of wine. I'm going to expose all the different flavors, styles, and types, and I'm going to show you how to pair it with all the different types of food. So this way, when you go to select a wine, you can look at it and say, hey, this will go with this. It's not just a white with fish and a red with meat. We're gonna break it down into all the different types of wine. Join me on Optimum Channel One each week for a new episode. Salute. Hi, welcome back. All right, so now we're gonna take our leaves, our cabbage leaves, we're gonna slice off the back, make sure they're all nice and lean and rollable. Because when this is here, you just can't roll them. So, there we go. That's rollable. This guy. And if you put a hole in it, it's okay. It'll be all right. All right, so now we're gonna grab a little olive oil and we're gonna grab the leaves or the rest of the cabbage that we, we cut. So put a little olive oil in there. And we're gonna use half of this. We're gonna line the bottom of the pot. And now we're gonna roll these leaves. Look at that, you see how the, the wine grapes have opened up. They're getting, they, they plumped up a little bit. Look at that, beautiful, huh? And we're gonna put a little cheese on here. Some people might call this galumpki as a Polish dish. Um, I think it's far from the Polish original at this point. All right, so we're gonna take a couple of spoonfuls of this, put it in the middle. And roll this into a little pocket, fold in the sides, roll it up. And think about it naturally forms a little packet.
So now we've got these all rolled. We took what was left of the head and we put it inside the pot here. So that's, that's steaming right now. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna add these in. So. The open side down so that, you know, they're perfectly wrapped. Little cocoons of cabbage. Beautiful. So now we're gonna take tomato sauce which we pre-made, and we're gonna put that right on top and just cover the whole thing with the tomato sauce. There's about um, 32 ounces of tomato sauce here. Now we're gonna take the leftover of the cabbage and put that on top. Now the cabbage on the bottom is gonna cook more than the cabbage on top, and you're gonna get two different types of textures, two different types of flavor. All right, so now we have it all together now. We have the cabbage on the bottom. We have the rolled, stuffed, keen cab cabbage rolled up in little packets on top. We have tomato sauce on top covering the whole thing. And then we have the leftover cabbage on top. So we're gonna put this in the oven, let it cook for about an hour. And then when it's done, we're gonna pair it with our wines and just see how it comes out. But I think it's gonna be pretty spectacular. Hi, I'm Tom Mastriani. I'm the host of Wine and Dine with Mastro with Food and Magic Meat. Join me as we explore deep inside the bottle to uncover the secrets that await. We'll be pairing great food with great wines, some familiar foods and some unfamiliar foods. So look forward to seeing you. We can learn about some of these great wines. See you on Wine and Dine with Mastro with Food and Magic Meat. Cheers. All right, welcome back. All right, so now the cabbage is ready to go. So we're gonna pull it out of the oven, lay it out here, do a little presentation, try it, pair it, and see how it fares. So. There it is, bubbling away. That's hot. Be very careful. Oh yeah. There's one. And we'll go with the magic number of three. All right, now remember at the bottom of the pot we have all the cabbage that was stewing at the bottom underneath this whole mess. So let's pull some of that out. All right. So this is for you. This is for me. So let's uh, break out a fork and a knife. We'll cut this up and then we'll try it out and see how it tastes. Packet of yumminess. You can see, let's just cut it in half so you can get a glimpse on what this looks like on the inside. Look at that. There we have the, the wine grape. Now this is uh, uh, rehydrated quite nicely. Let's try that. Mmm, really tender. Now these wine grapes have the seeds and stem still attached. So they say you keep the stem on it so it's like the cork stopper. I don't know about that, but I know all the resveratrol and um, a lot of the nutrients are in the shell and in the stem and seed. Also the color, all the color is in this, the, uh, the shell, of course. So let's try this. Very nice, kind of meaty. And then you've got the, the subtleness of the cabbage I'm still picking up the cabbage, and then as I bite into one or two of the uh, grapes, or the um, yeah the wine grapes, I'm getting that flavor. So it's almost exemplified, or a as each one breaks open. Mm. 
really good. Wow. Mm. I'm gonna try it again with the red. Very nice. You know, it, it, it joins together really beautifully. I'm surprised. I didn't think the, the red would go so well with that, but it does. And it's always good to try the experimentation. Next, we're gonna try the Kendall Jackson Avant. Still good, and all these wines have had about an hour to open up. So they're about as good as they're gonna get right now. Still creamy, a little citrusy, a nice long finish right now. I pulled out the cheese in this right after that. Very nice, cleans right out, and it leaves an, uh, an overtone of the cheese, kind of, kind of pulls it all together, kind of draws the cheese out of it, leaves that lingering, so the cheese and the wine kind of swimming together at the end. Very nice, mild saltiness, that's a really good pairing. When they completely transform into something different, that's a good pairing. So let's try it with the River Road. That's actually very good. Very good. Brings the sweetness out in this. The cabbage is pulling a lot of sweetness out of this. Still, I got the residuals of lemon, and that's really where it's at. I'm gonna give this another try because I, I went in with a uncleansed palate. And there's still a little bit of that crunchy seed inside of the grape. and the creaminess is drawn out with this. All right, beautiful. Mm. Those wine grapes are just awesome. Beautiful, definitely the winner. Thanks for joining me today. We got some really three great wines, thanks to Avant, that was really good. We got the Mirror Floors and we have also the River Road. Great wines, try out this dish anytime. It's really, really good, any time of the year. Uh, good, solid comfort food. I'm Tom Mastriani. See you next time and join me on my website at mastrotv.com or you can follow us on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Cheers.